everybody. I hope you guys are all doing safe. So I am in Culver City here now. I'm gonna take my scooter out to Venice Beach, and you're watching footage shot with the main camera of the Opal Finex 6 Pro. So in today's video, I'm gonna test this camera system against the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. So the Opal Finex 6 Pro's main selling point is probably that new one-inch sensor for the main camera. But you know, for someone spoiled like me, the one-inch sensor is not new. So instead, what I'm more excited about with the Finex 6 Pro is the new periscope zoom lens. So Opal, some of you guys may remember actually pioneered the periscope zoom lens technology. Opal was the first to introduce the concept years before Samsung and Huawei actually started using zoom lens. But for some reason, Opal moved away from the periscope tech for a few years, but Opal's back with a vengeance. This 50 megapixel periscope zoom lens has an image sensor size of 1 over 1.5 inch and an aperture of f2.6. That means it is the periscope zoom lens with the fastest aperture which produces shallow depth of field and the largest image sensor which takes in the most light. So just going by numbers, Oppo's periscope zoom lens should be a much better performer in low light situations compared to other zoom lenses. Watching ultra wide camera footage with the Find X6 Pro, the ultra wide camera footage is also special because it also has a 1 over 1.5 inch image sensor. So that means this is the largest image sensor in probably any recent ultra wide camera including in the S23 Ultra and the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. In fact, the ultra wide camera and the periscope zoom lens actually uses the exact same Sony IMX890 image sensor. So Oppo is trying to give parity across as many cameras as possible. Obviously that one inch sensor is still going to be better, but you have an ultra wide camera and zoom lens that are very equal in terms of hardware. Alright, so you're watching footage 3.5x zoom with the periscope zoom lens of the Find X6 Pro. This lens has OIS, so it's optically stabilized. So footage should be relatively stable right now, even though it's a zoom lens. Zoom lens usually can be a little bit shaky. All right, so I've always loved Venice Beach because like, one of my favorite movies growing up is White Men Can Jump. And the movie was shot here at the basketball courts on Venice Beach. And over here, appropriately, we have a street art mural paying tribute to the two characters of White Man Can Jump, Sydney Dean, Billy Hoyle. Right now, you're watching 4.5 times zoom with the Oppo Find X6 Pro. I'm gonna take some zoom shots. So looking at these photos from afar, they all look about the same quality. It just comes down to difference in color science. But when you zoom in to 400%, you can see the Oppo Find X6 Pro's image is the sharpest. Once again, when you zoom in to 400%, you see a little bit more details in Oppo's image. Look at the texture on the wall. This is a three times zoom lens. This is the basketball court, man. This is where White Man Ken Jump took place. So I can zoom in and check out the action without walking any closer. 4.9x zoom right now. This is three times zoom with the Oppo Find 6 Pro right now. Okay, let's go over the hardware of the Oppo Find 6 Pro really quick. So first of all, this phone may be my favorite looking hardware ever of any phone I've ever tested. You know, I've said before, I really like circular camera modules, leather backs, and two-tone finish. And this phone actually gives me all three. Circular camera module, vegan leather back at the bottom, Gorilla Glass 5 glass finish on the top. I loved the overall look of this phone. Even though it's a little bit thick at 9.5 millimeters, it still feels very comfortable in the hand because it curves on the left and right side and there are no hard edges or corners. The phone weighs 218 grams, which is not heavy by 2023 standards. It's okay. Considering this is a low light shot, I think all three phones did pretty well. But again, when you zoom in to 400%, Opal's shot is the sharpest. But do notice Vivo is the only one that exposed the lights properly because Vivo's V2 chip has uncanny HDR. So inside you have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with Oppo's own Marie Silicon X, which is uh, Oppo's self-developed imaging chip to handle image processing pipeline. So this phone does not use Qualcomm's ISP. There's uh, 12 or 16 gigs of RAM, 
the latest standards, LPDD R5X, UFS 4.0 storage, 5,000 milliamp hour battery that can be charged at 100 watt charging speeds. The charging brake is included with the box. 30 minute charge, zero to 100. And it also supports wireless charging up to 50 watts and has IP68 water and dust resistance. Around the front, 6.8 inch OLED display, all the tip top specs and numbers that you can think of for a flagship display panel, it's here. LTPO, refresh rate between one and 120 hertz. And best of all, and best of all, this phone has the highest maximum nits of any smartphone in the industry right now. The previous champion with the iPhone 14 Pro Max at 2000 nits, this phone can get up to 2500 nits. That's absolute peak brightness. Why are there so many helicopters? So the Oppo Find 6 Pro's main camera, it's almost exactly the same as the main camera in the Vivo X9 Pro Plus. They're both Sony IMX 989 one inch sensor, 50 megapixel, f1.8 aperture. The only difference is that Vivo's phone uses Zeiss's T coding, whereas Oppo does not have that Zeiss coding, but then it has Hasselblad color science. The Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 200 megapixel main camera, but the image sensor size is a bit smaller at 1 over 1.3 inch. But that 200 megapixels allows Samsung to do a lot of computational photography tricks like 16 in 1 pixel binning. But as I mentioned earlier, it is the periscope zoom lens where Oppo beats the competition clearly. It has a larger image sensor and a more wide open aperture. So right here, I'm gonna zoom into this sign. First at three times zoom and then 10 times zoom. Check out how clean and sharp that sign is even at 10 times compared to the other two phones. Okay, I'm finished with Venice Beach. I am back in downtown LA, Chinatown to be exact. So Chinatown at night, it's quite beautiful with a lot of neon lights. So we will do some more testing right here. Okay, here we have the most famous Hong Kong person ever, Mr. Bruce Lee, so we'll take a portrait shot. So all these portrait shots were taken by either the three times or 3.5 times zoom lens. I think the Final 6 Pro shot has the best texture on the statue, but I think Vivo shot has the best artificial bokeh. Samsung shot, in my opinion, is the worst of the three, particularly if you zoom in to 400% again. Taking a lot more photos here at night, and I've been examining the photos, not just on the phone screen, but on a larger monitor too. And I think my takeaway is that the Oppo Find X6 Pro's main camera is really good, but I think it takes in a little bit too much light right now. A lot of shots are a little bit overexposed for my liking. And particularly in night shots of neon lights, you can see the Find X6 Pro consistently blows out the lights compared to the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. For ultra wide photography, anytime it's in less than perfect lighting situation, if you look at the corners of the shots, or just zoom in a little bit in pixel peep, you'll see that Oppo Find 6 Pro's ultra-wide shot is consistently sharper than the other two phones and also has less noise. As for the zoom camera, same thing. During the day, is actually pretty close, but in low-light situations, again, you can see that the S23 Ultra zoom shots are a lot noisier. Ultimately, I think the Oppo Find 6 Pro camera is really, really good, but the main camera needs a little bit tweaking on Oppo's end. And I think that's still coming because I'm testing the phone so early right now that this is probably not the final retail software. There's probably still going to be one or two more software updates coming. So right now, I really cannot declare a winner. I know it's a cop-out, but you know, this time it's a little bit too close to call. I think the Vivo X9 Pro Plus still grabs the best images if we're talking about just the main camera. But then for ultra-wide camera and zoom lens, I like the Oppo Find X6 Pro better. But the S23 Ultra still may have the most balanced system overall. So all three of these phones are really, really damn good. But I think the Find X6 Pro may have the highest ceiling because it's hardware, it's objectively better. It's just better if you have a larger image sensor and it's just better if you have a faster aperture. These are things that software image processing could overcome, but on, at a base level, Oppo is just working with better base images because the hardware is better and I think that's important. So anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. It takes a lot of work to film these like one man band camera comparisons. I will definitely have more content on the Oppo Find X6 Pro coming up, including a full review and maybe more camera testing when the software becomes a little bit more final. So that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.